back on the Rob Dibble Show with Ben Darnell and your afternoon drive from Shorehaven Country Club on Fox Sports Radio. Connor ben Good. Lewis. Connor Good from UConn. He's two under right now, going to make the cut, which is plus two. Heck yeah. Uh, junior at UConn, and uh, everything is good in your life. Uh, no pun intended. When your name is good, do you have to be good? I mean, you take a lot of crap for that last name. Yeah, the jokes don't really stop. They, no. uh, I've heard pretty much all of them by now. But um, <laughs> yeah, I like to. I basically embrace it now. I'll I'll run with it. So you're um, Irish. I am. I Irish. can tell by that red beard. I'm part yeah. Irish too, so I love it. Yep. Tell us about Shorehaven, man. How's it playing? It feels hotter today than it was yesterday, and mm-hmm. definitely the wind has picked up. Yeah, I mean, Shorehaven is awesome. The place is in such good shape. Um, I'll joke and say it's the longest 6,600 yards you'll ever play because <laughs> Why? if they made this place any longer, I'd say it'd be impossible. But, um, yeah, it's the greens are really tough. That's the toughest part about this place. So it's really just about keeping yourself below the hole as best you can, and you got to really lag putt well out here. It's starting to get really crispy on the greens as the wind picks up. So just good speed control around here. So golf at a young age, you said you were playing with your dad out of the cart and things like that, and then mm-hmm. you get to high school and stuff like that. You probably look athletic. You probably had other choices to play. Um, mm-hmm. Was it tough choosing golf as, as, as your next direction? I mean, it's I was sort of forced my hand, I guess, uh, in high school because I played uh, football growing up in high school, and I played three years for that. But then my senior year, uh, football got moved to – or golf got moved to a fall sport in Connecticut. And I was a little bit undersized for football, so I thought it was an easier decision to switch to golf okay. at that point. But wow, I did not know that. Probably you're probably not the only one. And probably a lot of people. Had to yeah, make that a lot decision. of a lot of other athletes were affected, and some had benefited because then they could now play a different spring sport, which was nice. Right. But uh, so you're UConn golf junior next year. You've already taken home the UConn Invitational at mm-hmm. Great Horse, where you were telling us is your your guys' fall home course. Yep. Home um, course in the fall. Tell us about the team. Like, what is it like to be on a golf team in college versus being an individual out here on your own on the CS? Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. It's a lot of travel. I I think we have a great group of guys. Um, We have a great culture. But it is a little bit different when you're playing for the team because you you have other another four guys to worry about. So it's like maybe you don't hit this shot and you just try to make bogey here instead of when you're on your own, it's just your score. There's no one else relying on you. So you could sort of play almost, I'd say, a little more aggressive. And when you're playing for yourself, there's maybe a little less pressure. Um, really? Yeah. Wow, okay. Because, I mean, there's you don't feel like you, you're letting anyone down other than yourself versus playing for the team. It's more let's just all put our best be- best effort in here and sort of not be selfish on the golf course and just try to prevent big numbers out there, I'd say. Talking to Connor Good, he is uh, right in scoring position and could win this tournament, minus two right now. Um, we, we talked to Peter Ballo yesterday. And uh, he is out there right now at minus four. What's it like to play against, you know, former, like, on-tour guys? You've got some golf pros. You've got a lot of amateurs, and you're a young guy, and you're hanging with all these guys. Who have you golfed with so far? And you guys exchange notes and tips and stuff like that, or you just mm-hmm. kind of pick stuff up watching them? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I've played with uh, Mike Ballow in the first two rounds, one of the leaders. So. I think that's what, his cousin? His brother. Yeah, his brother. Pete's brother. Pete's brother. Okay. Um, and just learning from the way they play golf, I mean, they make it look so easy out there. They just prevent any mistakes if they're uncomfortable with a the shot. They play to the middle of the green. Um, I think one thing I've learned is just how effortless it is out there, and they're not forcing anything. I think patience is a key at this golf course, so just – Staying patient, giving yourself looks, and not getting frustrated out there uh, is sort of the next step I'd have to take to compete with these guys because I do get hot out there sometimes, but I think if I just stay patient at this place, that's the best best way to go about it. Sam was telling me that you've not only been you know hot these last couple of days, but you've been kind of on fire here this summer in the CSGA mm-hmm. run of, of tournaments all mm-hmm. throughout the summer. Take us through your calendar and like how it goes mixing in your amateur tournaments in the summer mm-hmm. and then fall golf and then your spring schedule at UConn. Yeah, I mean, the spring is pretty chaotic. We basically start last week of January and we're going to Florida, Hawaii, uh, California. You a lot like baseball. Area. Like it's pretty cold here in February, man. So you got to get yeah. in the, the playing Yeah, it's areas. a lot of travel. So I played up through about june 
played a couple CSGA events, like the Palmer Cup. The Does that ever mix? Like, do you have to wait for UConn to be completely done before you start amateur CSGA um, stuff? Not necessarily. Um, it, it just depends on working it in in the schedule. Like, our coach wants us playing in other events, so he's pretty lenient with that stuff. But, yeah, I mean, once I got through the Connecticut Am, which was, like, mid-June, I took, like, a month off from competitive golf because I just needed a mental break. But after that, I had the New England Am and then this, and I got one more event, and then we head back for the fall, and I think we have five events in the fall. So uh, I'm excited for it. It's a lot, but I – I love playing tournament golf, so I think it's definitely worth it. Yeah, you seem like you have the mentality for it. You seem like you're, you're highly competitive, yet you mm -hmm. give yourself a little room to fail. I mean, we talked mm -hmm. to uh, Peter yesterday about that. I mean, having played baseball, it's built on failure. And oh, you yeah. can't get frustrated with that. It makes you a better player. Absolutely. Um, and you talked about patience today. Like, I'm talking to one of my friends who's caddying for someone out there right now. Um, and they're kind of backed up. What's it like to be standing over a shot so long? Do you mm -hmm. try? Do you try not to think about it? Go mm -hmm. through like your progressions and stuff like that, and work on other things. Mm -hmm. And then you know, like you said, take take the shot when it comes, but not sit there and dwell on it. Yeah, I mean, I like to be. I like to sort of take my mind off it when there's a weight. Like I have my younger brother on the bag this week, and. We'll talk about anything other than okay. golf during that way. I know some guys like to stay really focused in the moment, but do you not like those guys? No, I mean, are they, they like really anal? Do you hate guys that are that like they're intense? Like, sometimes they're a bit of a hard out. Okay, but, um, no, if, but if that's <laughs> if if that's what works for them, right. then right. more power to them. But I like to keep my mind off it until right right about to hit the shot, and then 100% committed to what's going on in the moment right then. But just giving yourself mental breaks throughout the round, which is important for me. It but. feels like this is such a small world of golfers. Like it feels like Pete, when we were talking to Pete yesterday, he knew everybody that was out mm -hmm. here. You know, former champ Brett Stegmeyer. We talked to him like three weeks ago. He's naming everybody that's out here. You, it feels like you have a pretty good familiarity with everybody mm -hmm. out here. Like it, it feels like you guys cross paths almost every single weekend. Oh yeah, uh, the the Connecticut golf community and just the Northeast golf community in general, I would say, is very close knit. Especially playing college golf up here, I've met so many people over the past couple of years that um, it just you hear a name and you're like, oh, I know that guy. I've played with that guy, or you've played with someone who's played with them, told you about them. And I feel like Northeast golf is just a really like connected community. But. UConn, this dude goes to all the games. He yep. said the whole team goes. Like, mm -hmm. UConn golf the is The student it. body, I mean, we've yeah. been trying to get them to come out more for football and stuff like yeah. that, but it's pretty easy for basketball when they're winning. Yeah, absolutely. So our home facility is actually inside Gamble. Um, so we have two simulators and two putting greens in there. That's so, awesome. So when games are going on and Paige Beckers is hitting threes, <laughs> you guys could be in the basement doing drives on a simulator? Uh Technically, yes, we could be. So <laughs> one one benefit is uh, we like to tell the security guards in there that we have a practice or a meeting about two hours before each game Write starts. That, down and, uh, yep. that uh, <laughs> typically gets us into the game before. I uh, haven't had any issues yet. That's but awesome. Hopefully I didn't just rat us out on that <laughs> one. But <laughs> well, the thing is you're really good at your sport too, and, and mm -hmm. you and I were talking off the air, and, and I used to belong at, at Waterbury Country Club for 20 years. Mm -hmm. You find That's one of your favorite courses around here. Absolutely. You get to play all these courses yeah. and i know mm -hmm. it's huge for the course when you get really good college players mm -hmm. future pro guys and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, besides waterbury what are some of your other favorite courses around connecticut or new england yeah i mean i gotta shout out my home course glastonbury hills okay. that's i love that place i've been there the, my whole life um I like I, I play a lot of Hartford County golf courses mm -hmm. being in that area. I like Hartford Golf Club. That's a great spot. Like you mentioned, Waterbury, that place is great. Um, we had the AM at uh, Country Club at Darien last year. I'd say that's one of my favorite tracks. And I'd say Shorehaven's grown on me. I like this place, so it's a good it's this a good test. Gorgeous, dude. Yeah. This oh, is, the, how could you absolutely not like this? beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I always think, Connor, that I'm gonna find it and it's gonna click. <laughs> and then I'm gonna just gonna throw sixty sixes out there every single yeah. time I go on. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's a weekend away. I mm -hmm. still have that belief in my soul. You, I'm sure, has it even more than I do. What, <laughs> what do you feel like, you know, you're so young, you still got a long way to go, but mentally, have you, like, kind of mapped out a roadmap of what you want to do in this sport and where you want to be in the next five years? I mean, I, I sort of like to stay in the moment. I mean, obviously, I'd like to turn professional and play 
you know, professionally on tour and everything. But I think that's an expectation that I don't really want to put on myself right now. And I'd rather just see how the next two years go and just try to get be the best golfer I can be. I've sort of realized uh, that it's really all mental. I think anyone can hit a seven iron. Anyone can drive it really well. And it's just like, can you stay patient and can you believe in yourself? Is I think that's the biggest difference between a really solid amateur and someone who makes it professionally is just in between the years. So still looking thin, for man. that. We've been.